Thank you. All right. Hi, uh, it's Mel Robbins here. Welcome to day 11 of the live trainings of our free month long program called Mindset Reset. And if this is the first video that you've ever caught, this is a month long free training program where I'm teaching you the science and the simple tools that you can use to reset your mindset, to learn how to become a positive and empowered thinker, to be more confident, to be happier, to gain the control of the way that you think so that your life will change. Because here's the thing that we know, if you change how you think, you will change your life, seriously. And I know that it feels overwhelming when you have spent a lifetime thinking negative thoughts about yourself. Well, the fact is somebody trained yourself how to think those negative things. You repeated them, no fault to you. It's just what all human beings do. We repeat the patterns and then they became the default way of thinking. And so this program is designed to get you to spot the default ways that you think that no longer serve you and to teach you how to move from being somebody that thinks on default into creating patterns that are very deliberate, that make you feel more confident, that make you feel happier, that align with your values, that push you towards your dreams. And when you start to do that deliberate work, which is what this course is training you to do, you will see your life changing. Um, if you want to get onto the email list, there's nothing that we're selling you. I'll just go to melrobbins.com slash mindset reset. And what you'll receive is you'll receive an email from us every single day while the program is live and you will be, uh, getting links to all the videos that we're doing uh, on social media in the form of live trainings. If you're watching this video and the live training portion has concluded, don't you worry. We will still send you an email. If you go to melrobbins.com slash mindset reset that has a link to the playlist of all the trainings from this free month long program. And it's yours to use for the rest of your life. Seriously. The reason why I'm doing this is because I know that when you start to take the way that you think seriously, your life will change. And there are simple, free science back tricks that you can learn, that your kids can learn, that your team can learn, that the people that you love can learn, that will turn you into a more positive thinker. And it is the single coolest and most empowering thing that you could do for yourself. So today, uh, with that long winded explanation today, we're going to be concluding our portion of the live trainings that talk about the importance of your morning routine. We have already covered the science around the way that your brain works. We have already discussed how you have a default network of neurons and neural pathways in your brain that filter the world. They allow what comes in and what comes out. We've talked about limiting beliefs. We've trained you on the power of being a deliberate thinker. We've trained you on how you think this instead of thinking that when you have very negative beliefs. And now we're in the portion of the program where we're talking about the power of your morning routine. Why is a morning routine critical for your mindset? The reason why your morning routine is critical for your mindset is a couple reasons. Number one, let's just think common sense. If you wake up and you feel horrible and you're in a bad mood, and you pick up your phone or you turn on the news and the first inbound information that hits your brain is negative or it triggers something in you emotionally that is negative. You are starting your day off on the wrong foot. And you might even have a habit that if you wake up and the day begins as a bad day, that you then spend the rest of your day convincing yourself that this entire day is a bad day. That is a major mistake. It's also not true because you get to choose how you view what's happening around you. And the second reason why your morning routine is critical is because the first two hours that your brain is awake are the best two hours for your brain all day. And so I believe that if you create a very powerful morning routine and the one that I am recommending that you start off with, and then you make it your own, you add in things, you take away things that you don't use or that you're not going to like, but everything I'm recommending is based on the science around productivity, focus, happiness, um, the way that your mind is actually wired to work. And that's why I'm recommending everything that I've been recommending in the program. 
I will explain very briefly the steps of the morning routine, but if this is the first video you're watching, it's day 11. Go back to day nine, go back to day 10, where I really begin talking about the power of a morning routine, why it's important, and I explain the science in detail. For today's training, we're gonna talk about the third step in your morning routine. So when you get to the third step, by this point, you have already woken up on time and gotten out of bed when the alarm rang. You didn't hit the snooze button. You've already turned off the alarm on your phone if you're using your phone for your alarm. You have not looked at your phone. You have not turned on the TV. You have not let any information from the outside world cross the threshold into your precious brain yet. Why? Well, the reason why is I believe that you and your dreams, they deserve 10 lousy minutes. In fact, I think they deserve an hour, but I'm just going to go with 10 minutes because I know that you can find 10 lousy minutes to focus on your dreams, to focus on becoming a deliberate thinker, to plan out your day, and to figure out what your priority is. So in those 10 minutes, these last two trainings on day nine and day 10, and today is now day 11, I have walked you through the step-by-step -step journaling method that I use that's based on science. Every question takes less than five seconds to respond to. The whole process takes less than a minute or so to fill out, and it will turn you into a deliberate thinker. It'll help you be more focused and confident. I call it the five-second journal. Now, I want to be clear about something. Do not buy it. Do not go out and buy the five-second journal, please. One of the reasons why is we're about to run out of copies. No, that's not the reason why, but we are about to run out of copies, and no, I don't want you to complain at me. But the other reason why is I made you a promise that I'm not selling you anything, and I'm not selling you anything. I do not want you to buy the journal. In fact, I believe this so much that we have given you a two-page template from the journal for free. You can print these out every day for the rest of your life. You can save this as an image on your smartphone and just journal using this practice for free uh, on a notebook. You do not need to buy a fancy journal. If you want it, that's your business. Um, if you want these uh, downloads for free, go to melrobbins.com slash mindset reset. The other thing that you can do is there's a website for the five second journal. The five second journal looks like this. I, might, I, I never know how to hold this because of the angle. But if you go to 5secondjournal.com, there's a bunch of videos there where I explain the science behind the journaling method and the download for these PDF. It's also on that website for free. So again, do not buy the journal. I'm not asking you to. I'm going to explain to you the method for free, and I'm giving you tools you can use for free. Um, we've already discussed the first couple prompts that are all about your okay, I got to go the opposite. There we go. Um, that are about the mood in your morning. So the top line here is your mood in the morning. And the reason why you start out by assessing your mood is it's a way to practice being present. Um, for me, I woke up and my mood was sort of middle of the road, fine. The reason why I had a really hard time falling asleep last night and my neck really hurts. I slept on it wrong. My neck hurts. So I kind of woke up in a bad mood. That's why this next part's essential. To feel more energized, I can. Um, well, I had Oakley DJ our drive to school because it raised the energy to listen to his music because he likes really bopping music and it was kind of fun to do that. I've also noticed that my energy level has dipped because I've been in a execution, 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 execution mode and so I'm exhausted right now and so to raise my energy level as soon as I'm done with this live broadcast, I am going outside, I am going for a walk and I'm getting a cup of coffee and some chocolate. Okay. Today, my top project was to get all the projects for our company on our board and on our project management list. The reason why that matters, this is the progress principle. We talk about this on day 10. This is research from Harvard Business School. One project a day that matters, that's what you're going to focus on making progress on. It's stressing me out that it's not organized like that. That's why it was important. And one small action I can take to move forward is do a brain dump with the team while I'm in the office. We completed that. I'm not showing it to you. We turned it around so you don't see all the secret stuff we're working on. Now let's go to the training for today. There are some prompts here that take five seconds or less that also leverage science. Um, there are two things here that are really powerful. The first one is to have a little gratitude practice. Now, you might already have a gratitude journal. That's fantastic. 
There are thousands of studies out there. I don't need to um, go on and on and on about the power of gratitude because you probably already know, but you'd need to be practicing it. And so we've got a prompt here today I'm grateful for. Now, one thing about gratitude, it's not as effective if you always say something really general. Oh, I'm so grateful for my family. Oh, I'm so grateful for my health. Oh, I'm so grateful for, um, you know, the home I live in. It is way more powerful when you get granular because when you get specific, it actually impacts you more deeply. So what about your family? What about your health? Now, having just said that, I actually have something here that looks at first blush super general. It says health, so I'm grateful for my health. But there's a reason I got very specific. And the reason is Neil Cook. So Neil Cook is um, is my uh, son, one of my son's very good friends, stepfather, his beloved stepfather just died, had an aneurysm, gone. That's how it happens. You're not guaranteed tomorrow. This is another reason why getting your mindset in check is so important. And so I have been thinking a lot these last couple days, knowing that somebody I just saw at a cocktail party a couple weeks ago super healthy, super vibrant, super cool guy, boom, gone. His funeral is tomorrow. Oakley's all nervous because he doesn't have like a jacket and he feels like he should have a jacket. He's growing like a weed. So we got nothing that's going to fit him. So, you know, I've assured him if you wear a tie and a nice shirt, nobody cares what you're wearing. It, it matters that you show up. So I am extremely grateful that I got a chance to meet him. And I'm grateful for the fact that when something like this happens, I am, I'm reminded not to take my life for granted. So that's what I'm grateful for today. Um, today, this is, this is huge. This little thing is based on something called Parkinson's law and it is a simple prompt. Today I will stop working at, I know you may laugh, ah, stop working. What? Don't tell my boss that I couldn't possibly do that. You might be one of the people, like you might be addicted to work. I cannot tell you how many times I, I teach people in arenas about the Parkinson's law and the fact that when you give your day a quitting time, meaning when are you gonna stop answering work emails? When are you gonna put the phone down and actually be with your family? When you set that quitting time, something interesting happens. By setting that quitting time, you activate Parkinson's law. Parkinson's law is a phenomenon that states that any project that you have will expand to the amount of time that you have to give it. So let me give you an example. Um, think about being in school. You got a paper due. If the paper's due in two weeks, how long is it going to take you to write? Two weeks. It expands to the amount of time you have. If you got 20 minutes to finish this paper, how long is it going to take you to write it? 20 minutes. It expands or shrinks to the amount of time that you have. You have experienced this in your own life. Have you ever had a doctor's appointment at the end of the day? or a train or a bus or a plane you got to catch, having that goal post at the end that says, this is non-negotiable. I got to be at a soccer game at 515. And with traffic, that means I got to leave at 345 if you're in downtown Boston. Um, what happens when you set a quitting time is it shrinks the amount of time that you have to jerk around and you become more productive. And so my quitting time today is 455. That is when I'm done. I am done working for the day. Um, you will be startled by how effective this is. I use this every day. I bet it works about 65 to 70% of the time because by setting that goalpost, I have now put a mental pull in my mind and I've shrunk the amount of time I have. It's 2.53 right now. I've got two hours, that's it, to get a ton done. And so I'm going to be speed walking outside and speed ordering my cup of coffee and then coming back here and going right through the meetings that I need to get done. And then there's a spot right here for me for journaling because I find that when I start to focus my thoughts and I start to be deliberate about what I'm thinking about, tangential things come up. And so one other thought that came up for me that was not on my radar when I first filled this out is that I need to find a few hours alone with my husband, Chris, this weekend. This is, this is paramount. I feel like somebody has just turned up the uh, miles per hour on a treadmill, and they've also increased the incline. And when I start to feel like the pace is increasing and I get like kind of 
frustrated and anxious about that, the fastest thing that slows me down is finding an hour or two with my husband without the phone, without the kids around, just quiet time. And so that was something else that came up that I put down. Um, that is my journaling method. If you want to know more about the science, go 5secondrule.com. No, it's not. It's 5 second, See, I'm exhausted. 5secondjournal.com. My brain is gassed. Um, and you can watch more science-related videos there. So your only assignment today is the same one that I've always been giving you. Mindset Reset is not an event. It's a process. All day long, you should be catching your thoughts, where they're going, and redirecting them. Being deliberate will change your life. In fact, you know, the My Intent bracelets, that's what mine is. The My Intent bracelets, that's what mine is. In fact, if you've ever wanted one of these things, if you use my name, we're friends with the owner, they'll give you 30% off. I love this thing. My word for the year is deliberate. Oh, hold on. Oh, I don't, I don't, hi, okay, like this. <laughs> Uh, this is a dyslexic nightmare that you've got to do the exact opposite. Um, so my word is deliberate because it reminds me that I'm in control of what I'm thinking about. I'm in control of my reaction. I'm in control of what I do next. Um, and I love these things because they're super cool and they're inexpensive and it's a nice little reminder. I know a ton of you have ones that say 54321. That's pretty cool too. Um, anyway, I've been getting a lot of questions about this. But if you want one of these things, um, just use my name and you get 30% off. We've had so many people ask about them um, that uh, I, I, we negotiated a discount for you guys because so many of you have been going. So anyway, if you want one of those things, that's what it is. And the only reason why I'm raising it is because so many of you keep asking me, what's on your wrist? What's on your neck? What is that thing? How do I get one? Um, all right, so that's the end of the training. You're going to mind your thoughts all day long. Tonight, you're gonna plug your phone in outside your bedroom. Tomorrow morning, you're gonna wake up and you're gonna get out of bed when the alarm rings. You're going to not look at your phone, not look at the TV. You're gonna spend the first 10 minutes for yourself. You're gonna be practicing your morning routine. And um, now you know the science of the whole method that we have explained to you. If you wanna add in micro exercise, love it. If you wanna practice visualization, I highly recommend it. I think it's one of the most important training videos that we've done in this. What day was that on? because we did not label it visualization. I've noticed in a lot of the comments. January 1. January 1. We're going to change the title on that because I keep referring to it and it's not titled to say anything about visualization. So January 1, that training was all about visualization. If you want to add that in, fantastic. Add that in. Um, okay, any questions, comments, we're going to move to this part of the training. So if you just wanted the training itself, that was it. Um, There's a ton of questions of people wondering where they get where do you get the bracelet? Well, really? We'll include the link in the oh, we'll include the link in the email. I don't honestly know. Hold on a second. Oh, myintent.org. It's super. They're, they're actually really cool. It's called myintent.org. So they must be a nonprofit, huh? Yeah. So they're a nonprofit. Where's the money go? Different charities. To different charities. That's super cool. I didn't even know that. Yeah. Selfishly, I wear this because it reminds me of my word and. Um, but anyway, that's that's where you could get one of those things. And don't forget to use Mel because then you get you get money back or money off. I mean, thirty percent, right? Yep. I'm delirious. Perfect. I'm so tired. Okay, <laughs> we have go a ahead. Question about um, being a stay-at-home mom. So hip mama ten on Instagram. Hip so, mama ten. I'm a stay-at-home mom. How do I stop working at a specific time? Ooh. Well. Okay. So um, can I ask her a follow-up question? Is she watching or listening? Is that too hard? Uh, I. I see. I'm wondering because there's there's a ton of you. There's a ton of stay-at-home moms and dads who are running network marketing businesses, and so the question might be different depending upon whether you're saying when do I stop working on my home-based business as a stay-at-home mom, or are you saying when do I stop doing the work that is being a stay-at-home mom? And um, Let's tackle the first one first. So if you have a network marketing business or you have a side hustle and you're building it from your home as you are a stay-at-home parent, it is critical that you create boundaries for when you're gonna stop working. Otherwise, you will work all day long and try to fit it into nooks and crannies and that's not gonna work. And so I still think it's imperative that maybe you set the time for, I don't know, dinner time 
you know, when, when your spouse is coming home or when it's time to get the kids kind of into the next zone and that's when you're going to put your phone down and that's when you're going to start, stop working or working on your side hustle. I remember those days when our kids were really little and there's no getting around it. I don't care what anybody tells you unless you can afford to hire somebody to watch the kids for you or you have a spouse who will be super supportive and will take the kids for you during blocks of time so you can focus without being passive aggressive about it. Um, it's, next, it's really impossible to fit things in. Like you're gonna feel frazzled. And the one thing that I wanna tell you is that this phase will end. But I think it's a mistake to drive yourself into the ground right now and try to work 24 seven on something and fit it in in every nook and cranny um, and drive yourself crazy and make yourself wrong and uh, have this dream or this side hustle be something that invalidates you as you're in a phase of your life where the kids take precedent. They just do. And they're unpredictable. And so you got a couple choices. Um, get a spouse or get a spouse uh, to be supportive. Find another stay at home mom friend who's willing to swap hours with you. So you pull the kids together and um, every other day you each get an hour to do something. Uh, accept the fact that you're going to multitask for a while until the kids get into a rhythm and stop making yourself wrong. That's the mindset reset part is the thing that moms do, particularly stay at home moms or heck, I mean, even me working, I'm never doing enough. I'm not a good enough mother. I'm not a this. I'm not a that. Look, remember the thing that I said about the I'm not good enough? If you could do more, you would. If you could have done better, you would have done better. So a amount of acceptance and self-love is really important for that stage of your life. If it's that the work is never ending and you don't ever get a break from it, what that tells me, that second kind of version of the question, is that you don't have a support system in place. So either your parents aren't around or your spouse is not supportive, so you never get a break. Or you don't have friends that you can, we used to do these play groups where we would literally pull the kids together half the time we were drinking, like we were so stressed out because, <laughs> true story. Um, uh, because it was easier when they were in a pack. But what I want you to look at is the support system you have or don't have and where could you start making requests because I bet your negative beliefs are keeping you from asking for the help that you need. Does that answer the question you think? Yeah. Okay, good. We're getting a bunch of people asking if we're going to cover anxiety. Oh, five. anxiety. Everybody. You know Shark Week? What, what channel is that on? Discovery. <laughs> on Discovery? <laughs> Guess what? We got our own Discovery Network here on the Mindset Reset, and Anxiety Week kicks off on Sunday night, just in time for the Sunday scaries. So if you get anxious before the week starts, we are kicking off Anxiety Week on Sunday. It's actually going to be like Anxiety 10 Days. For kids. And there's, there's a lot of stuff specific for kids in it. So we're going to be covering what anxiety is, what it isn't, the connection between worrying and your thinking patterns and anxiety. We're going to talk all about triggers and uh, the triggers that you may not even be aware of that are triggering anxiety. We're going to talk about the mind-body connection in terms of the way that your mind triggers your body to get agitated. Um, we're going to go through the power of anchor thoughts. We are also going to handle specific anxieties that people have, anxieties related to work, anxieties related to social settings. We're going to deal with anxiety and kids, anxiety and teens. Um, I'll bring Oakley and Kendall back on and we will have them share uh, so that if you have kids that you've got material that the kids will relate to. It's going to be an epic uh, week to 10 days and of course there'll be a couple FAQs in there. So hang tight but do this foundational work because if you've been redirecting your thoughts and you've been practicing your morning routine every morning, everything you're about to learn during anxiety week is only going to build on um, what you've already learned and you're going to be in an even better place to implement it in your life. Awesome. Anything else? The only other thing that I had was a question that I think a lot of people in the medical field ask, yeah. which is what do you do with a quitting time when you're on call? Like, how oh, do you what do you do with a quitting time? When you're someone that's 
waiting for a call or your beeper because I know doctors. Oh, beeper doctors. doctors. That's a great call. I grew up with a dad who had a beeper. Um, if it's not beeping, you're not working. Right? I mean, that that's it. Like set a quitting time for when you're going to stop thinking about work. And, you know, for me, for... 55 today is like, that's it. I'm not, I'm not doing it anymore. But there are plenty of times where I've had a quitting time of like, whatever, 350 or 515 so I could make a kid's sporting or theater event. But then I know that once they go to sleep at nine o'clock, I'm going to check back in on email for 30 minutes, but I'm going to go to bed at 10 o'clock. So it's about kind of being very deliberate about the boundaries that you're setting for yourself. And so you can be flexible with that. You're basically using it in order to leverage Parkins law. So if you are on call, um, if you've got the kind of job where they could call at any time, that's fine. You don't need to manage that. If there's an emergency and if they need you, they will call you and then you will be working. In the meantime, set a quitting time so that you have boundaries between constantly being plugged in and working and actually taking the time to unplug, taking the time for self-care, taking the time to just be present. All right, what are we doing tomorrow? One more question. Yes, one more question. Yes. Where can they watch Anxiety Week? Where can you watch Anxiety Week? Right here. So Anxiety Week is an entire week to 10 days of live trainings that are going to be right here uh, on social media every single day. Now, one caveat about that. I am traveling like crazy over the next 10 days. And so the times are going to be all over the place, which is why you want to go to melrobbins.com slash mindset reset and make sure you're on the email list because then you don't have to worry about catching this live. You will get an email from our team every single day at some point after I've done the live training. And uh, we will recap what I talked about. We will give you links to all the videos. If I've mentioned the visualization video, we'll link to it in there too. We're doing this as a service because we know your life is busy and we know that you're more likely to watch this content and implement it in your life if we've teed it up without you having to manage yet another thing in your life. So go to melrobbins.com slash mindset reset and every day of Anxiety Week, we're gonna be covering and building upon all the information that you need so you can start to take control of your thinking and how your thinking is triggering agitation in your body, which is the definition of anxiety. It's when you start to feel agitated in your body based on the thoughts in your head. And we're going to teach you how to quiet it, how to get control of it. And it all begins with what I said at the very beginning of today's training. If you change how you think, you will change your life. And changing how you think is also the secret to curing yourself and curbing and quieting the anxiety that you and your kids and your loved one feels. So stay tuned. And it's not too late to sign up if your friends and family or you have not signed up. This is here for you. So I think that's it. I'll see you tomorrow. The times are going to be all over the place.